You can be doing all the shoulder stretches in the world for years and years and years and probably still feel like your shoulders are still tight. And that might be because you're not really looking at the shoulders or realizing that the shoulders are more complex than just these things right here. And so this tutorial is going to share with you a very important way of looking at your shoulders feeling your shoulders, and then bringing that information into your yoga poses, into your everyday life. And if you're a yoga teacher, it's gonna give you so many more tools to be more effective in your classes, especially for the people who are always like, ah, oh, my shoulders are tight, help me out. I'm Brie Johnson of Heart and Bones Yoga, and Heart and Bones Yoga is here to teach you and yoga teachers if you're a yoga teacher, but both yoga teachers and everyday people all about our bodies so that we can move with love and ease. Knowledge is power. So subscribe, like, join Heart and Bones online, join Heart and Bones teacher trainings, all this promo plug stuff. <laughs> so what can we do to help our shoulders feel better in a more sustainable way? So two of my favorite aspects of armpits of power are the movement of your scapula, very important, and the movement, and today we're gonna to look at the movement of the serratus anterior, the large muscles, muscles here that connect the scapula onto the ribs that help that movement of the scapula, which in turn helps the movement of the glenohumeral joint. So your whole shoulder gets wonderful support. So if you practice yoga, if you just have shoulders that you wanna feel good, if you lift weights, whatever activities that you're doing, understanding armpits of power is gonna go a long way and understanding, and not even just understanding, but most importantly, and this is where our yoga comes in, is embodying it, not just watching this video and going, yes, yeah, serratus anterior, I know that. Doesn't matter. <laughs> what we want to feel is feeling the movement in the body, embodying it. So especially if you're a yoga teacher and you wanna teach and communicate this to other people, it's one thing just to intellectually know it, it's another thing to have that embodied in your own body so that you can see it better in somebody else's body and then you can communicate the cues better to activate that in somebody else's body. So let's map out what that feels. And even if you're like, I've moved my shoulder blades a million times, I know what they feel, I recommend please still doing this because it's it's just you're honing it and you're improving your awareness every time you do it. If you'd like to watch it first, uh, we'll try to see the shoulder blades here as best we can. One of the first movements that we can start with is retraction, pulling, squeezing the shoulder blades together. You can activate that by doing it with your arms, so feeling your shoulders pull back but we want to actually make that a little bit more refined by thinking about the shoulder blades themselves. So bring your awareness into your shoulder blades and then feel the shoulder blades pull and then the shoulders will come along for the ride. But the movement is, an initi is initiated by the scapula, the shoulder blades. Okay, so that's retraction. And then protraction is wide apart. You're moving your shoulder blades away from your spine, away from each other. Okay, relax that. And again, protraction, don't move the shoulders, don't lead with the shoulders. The shoulders will follow the movement of the shoulder blades. Retraction, protraction. Retraction and protraction are really great starts to really feel that. So I recommend doing that a few times, retract, protract, and really, again, initiating, this is so key, initiating the movement from the shoulder blades themselves. But now let's talk about what the shoulders are gonna do when we bring the arm overhead. Now I'm gonna do this with my right arm here, and I'm bringing my fingers to the bottom tip of my scapula. Okay, and so if, if, you, if it's okay in your body to find that, you can do that too. Sometimes it's tricky, we may not have the mobility, so do your best. And then when you raise your arm, the bottom tip of the scapula rotates as well. So the whole shoulder blade moves. So let's see again, bringing the arm up, bringing the arm down. Hopefully we're able to see how that shoulder blade rotates upward with the arm. There's this beautiful outward rotation. All right, 
And to help achieve this movement, the serratus anterior muscles are helping to really get that movement going. Now, the tricky part though is how do I feel the serratus anterior? Most of us will not necessarily be able to feel it in the body just by lifting and lowering the arms. That's where these helpful movements come in. So you're gonna face the wall again and you're going to take your forearm at the wall and then you're going to gently press that forearm into the wall and protract your shoulder blade. So that shows and that means again that that shoulder blade moves away from the spine. So let's work a little bit on the retraction, protraction. But now you're doing this with a little bit more help from the wall. This work of pushing the wall away from you while you protract that shoulder blade and keep that feeling of gentle pressure while you retract really can start to kick on a sensation of effort and work and muscular engagement. So while I'm protracting and retracting my shoulder blade, I'm really starting to feel that bottom tip of my shoulder blade, the serratus anterior area, starting to say, oh, hello. <laughs> Now watching that you're doing this and not getting too much upper trap work, that's a tricky one. We're really trying to retrain our bodies to do this work, not from the upper traps, but again, from the lower traps and serratus anterior. Let's do one more variation of this, adding a little bit of a rotation. Sometimes that helps. So again, you bring your forearm onto the wall and then protract and then rotate Yes, okay, so right there, I was able to find it a little bit more. So it's the pushing the wall away, and as I push the wall away, I'm actually even bringing a little bit of rounding into my spine. I'm letting my chest move to my spine, so you don't, don't worry about trying to keep a straight chest or a straight spine. You wanna rotate, oh, that's so nice, and then back. Feel like you are pushing the wall away from you, getting this lower, trap lower armpit area kicked on as you rotate your chest away and you're going to get more benefits because when you start to have that rounding when you let a little bit of rounding in the upper back happen so let's try that one more time push the wall away from you with your forearm protract that shoulder blade add a little thoracic rotation so good, so good. Doing it at the wall is really great. It's helpful, it's more accessible for a lot of us if we can't get onto the floor with our knees. But if you are able to get onto the floor with your knees, then doing it in a tabletop position starts to help translate this movement into the work that we look for in a downward dog, in a tabletop bird dog. Let's try this. So from here, on the hands and knees, Let's go into some protraction, retraction here, so that we continue to map it in the body, really getting a sense of your shoulder blades gliding together, gliding apart. And then when you're on the floor like this, you're using your hands as a way to help engage. Just like we pushed the wall away with us with the forearms, you're doing the same thing with the hands into the floor. You're pushing the floor away from you, especially in that protraction movement. Once you've done that a few times, then the next thing that we're going to do is slowly start to take one arm, and so I'll take the right arm here. I'm gonna be in a little bit of a protraction, a little bit of a rounded upper back even. We don't wanna go really round, but just think about your shoulder blades nice and wide. Keep that wide feeling here for a moment. And let's start to notice that when you're pushing the floor away from you, you probably start to notice that, okay, I'm feeling my serratus, I'm feeling my lats, these lower parts of the shoulder and armpit area. And remember also, keep in mind, when I say lower part, I'm not talking about this, but I'm talking about this, our beautiful lats, our beautiful serratus. Very under talked about muscles and underestimated muscles when it comes to our shoulder stability. So again, you're gonna push the floor away from you with your hand and then keep that feeling, and I'm gonna keep a feeling of pushing the floor gently away from me as I slide my hand forward. We don't care to go all the way down because there's gonna be a point when you go too far down that you kind of lose that lat and serratus support and, and stretch because you probably don't actually have the range of motion in your 
uh, lats to really get that far. So that's not what we're going for. What we're trying to do is really get this slide feeling so that you can hopefully get a sense that the bottom of your shoulder blade moves out and up as the arm comes out and then slide it back in. Now, if you're doing this on a yoga mat, you're gonna not slide very easily. So this is where you can get a little towel or something, something that you can put underneath your hand and slide more smoothly. Okay, so really getting that sense. It doesn't matter how far we go. I wanna feel like I can move my arm in this direction while maintaining connection and awareness of what's happening in the serratus, the shoulder blades, and even my latissimus dorsi muscles. You can also try this with the forearms. So if it's nicer on the wrists, and actually this is just a nice option anyways, then you would do the same thing, very much what we just did on the wall, but you're not at the wall, <laughs> you're using the floor instead. And actually, now that I'm doing this in my body, I'm finding it's easier to find my serratus when I'm doing it in this variation. It might be different for you, but for me, I'm finding, oh yeah, there it is. So it's less movement, it's, it's not a chest stretch, but what we're doing is training ourselves to have a better sense of connection so that the glenohumeral humeral joint, this goes back to those armpits of power, so that the glenohumeral humeral joint here can move more smoothly and concur like and just coherently, I'd say, in its socket, right? So that we're not just letting it, especially on my hypermobile people, not letting that shoulder go willy-nilly all over the place. We are recruiting all the beautiful armpit muscles, which is essentially those muscles surrounding the shoulder joint, recruiting them so that they can help you move better. So in a warrior two arms, all right, we have our arms out to our sides very often in yoga. Now, how can we get the serratus kicked on here? Well, think about, first of all, I like to externally rotate. And just by externally rotating the upper arms, biceps rolling up to the ceiling to the wall behind you. Oh, there's a little bit more serratus and lats. Okay, which the good news is then it takes it out of the upper traps. So most of us who get so tight and tired in our upper traps like this, we externally rotate. I start to really play around and find the bottom tip of my shoulder blade. And then I play with maybe, and again, this is such a counterintuitive thing in yoga, I think, but letting yourself not have this lifted, overlifted chest, good posture, let yourself feel like your thoracic spine here is moving backwards. And then at the same time, feeling your arm reaching out away from you. And maybe, let's add on one more thing, feeling and inviting that protraction, that reaching of the shoulder blades. So now all of a sudden the arm is no longer directly out from the shoulder, it's moved forward a little bit. Oh, but it is working in ways that we need to work. I don't know if you're trying this. I hope you are so that you can feel oh, the difference between, oh, arms up, da, da, da. And then the longer we have our arms up, what ends up hurting here and here. But this one, externally rotate, extend, protract the shoulder blades. Woo, bring the arm a little bit further out and hello, you can feel those armpits of power holding the head of your humerus beautifully into its happy place and all of the muscles are kicking on. So this got you really excited and curious as a yoga teacher and you realize, wait, I wanna learn more about this stuff. Well, then you are going to be loving our five day anatomy refresher. It's five different move and learn classes where it's embodied and applied anatomy in with things that you probably didn't learn in your yoga teacher training, but it's the things that you, you actually really need to learn and teach for your students. So join it, get the link below and see you in the refresher and happy learning.